Welcome to the channel guys. What we have here is a 1989 BMW E30 325i Sport. It's got the M20 B25 engine in it. And I'm just uh, doing a fuel pressure test. Just check the fuel pressure regulator is healthy. The return to tank pipe is not blocked. And of course that the fuel pump and everything else is, uh, is healthy and that the, the engine held pressure after it shut down to make sure none of the injectors are leaking. If I sound a bit weird in the video, I. I'm a bit flued up. Uh, so first of all, flame away. Very cheap, £25 uh, fuel pressure kit off Amazon. But actually, it's really good. It's got plenty of uh, rubber line in it, plenty of different connections. So it should pretty much fit in most cars. And you see you've got your different ones. But for the M20 B25, it's really simple. Obviously, you've got your fuel pressure gauge, which is reading zero because the car's not been run since about 24 hours ago. So there's no pressure anymore because the pressure will drop after the car's been off for several hours, but it should hold pressure, full pressure for at least 10 minutes. Uh, so what you do, if you come here, uh, so your fuel rail here, so the fuel rail is fed fuel at this point here. So what we've done is used a bit of the pipe out of the kit, cut it a bit shorter so that we're not kinking this uh, supply fuel pipe here. And then we've got this T-piece intersecting these two pipes uh, to obviously read the pressure of the fuel on this gauge here. So what I'll do now is uh, we'll go and start the car up. But, oh, just before I start the car up, uh, this engine's designed for three bar. So the fuel pressure regulator is three bar. Obviously, this is a £25 Amazon kit, so the accuracy of this gauge isn't going to be perfect, but it should be for doing this job. So let's go start it up. It'll be bone cold, so it might be a bit, bit rattly. Let's find out. The buzzing you'll hear is the immobiliser kicking, kicking off. There you go. So now we can start. Let me check it's not in gear. Yeah. Nothing that's going to light. Oh, let's just remove before I do start it. That would have made a cracking noise on the radiator fan or falling down where it shouldn't do. So yeah, I always check there's no tools in the engine bay. Now the engine's running. So we can see here on this gauge, we're at just over two and a half bar. This is a code start. If you want to check that your fuel pressure regulator is all right, because it should be three bar, obviously all of our vacuum is connected. So we will be about half a bar below atmospheric pressure. So we disconnect this and you'll hear the engine sound pretty rough, but this gauge should jump. So you want to come in close to the gauge. Oh, there you go. We're up to about three bar. And typically if the engine was warmed up, it would run really bad disconnecting that. So we'll put this back on. And there you go. Now we're back to about two and a half bar. Uh, 36 PSI uh, with the vacuum connected and 42 PSI with it disconnected. Now what you can also do, we'll let the engine warm up a little bit more before I snap the throttle open. But what I'm going to do, if you were getting abnormally high pressure here, it could mean you have a blockage in your return fuel pipe, which is this pipe here. So not the actual supply pipe, this one. And you just film the gauge. And what you want to do is just start to squish it. He says, and you have to be quite careful you get on it. So we'll try that again. There you go. And the engine's running incredibly rich now because uh, basically that dumps fuel that the engine doesn't need and when we did that then we were shooting to five to six bar psi so if you had a blockage in your pipe you'd be running abnormally high and the engine would be really bad the other one to do if i snap the throttle open it'll be a bit rough because we're on a very cold start and it is winter in the uk and i've always found that my engine in the first few minutes of running is a bit rough in winter in summer it's fine but if I snap it open a little bit, there you go, went to three bars straight away. I'll do it again. There you go, three bars, soon as you snap it open. So we think that from this test that I can assume my fuel pump is good, my fuel pressure regulator is good, and I have no blockage in the return pipe, and the car's running all nice and healthy. So a 25 pound fuel pressure kit off eBay. And now what we'll do is the turn off test. So we can see there, at idle, we're about two and a half bar, and we'll turn the engine off, and that pressure shouldn't drop. 
Now your pressure drops, it means you've got a fuel leak, but your pressure should hold for at least 10 minutes. So you can see we're holding the two and a half bar, the gauge isn't dropping. If your gauge was dropping, check your injectors, one might not be seated quite right and you might have a minor leak there. Uh, and if, if that doesn't solve it, then I'm not an expert, so you'll have to do a bit of reading up. But yeah, your gauge should hold, you can see it's not moved at all. I think that when I did this last night, I came back in two hours later and it had got down to about two bar. And when I checked it this morning, which is obviously like 12, 20 hours later, it, it had lost all the pressure, but that's normal. Your pressure will drop. So yeah, that's how you check your fuel pressure regulator, your fuel pump, and if you've got any blockages. I do believe that the readings I'm getting are correct for this engine. So you should be about two and a half bar at idle, disconnect the vacuum. Then of course you'll be around three bar. The other way you can do it, if you don't want to run your engine, you can take this box off here and you can remove your fuel pump relay and you can jump in the pins just to set the fuel pump running without the engine running. The other thing I would advise you to do, which I will do now uh, for when I want to disconnect all of this, because I don't want to spray fuel everywhere, because obviously, as you can see, that's pressurized. So I could either press this button here and drain my fuel off into a nice cup and then put it back in the tank. Or if you move fuse 11, that is your fuel pump fuse. And if I now go crank the engine over, it will start and then it will stall out because obviously there's no fuel pump running. And that's how you can also reduce the pressure in the fuel lines for disconnecting it all. So I'll do this now. The car will start briefly and it'll, it'll die in a few seconds. Hey, you can see how the fuel pressure has uh, dropped as well because, yeah, there we are. Well, now we've got rid of all the fuel. Well, 90% of the fuel in the fuel rail is gone. So now when I disconnect that, I can also, of course, press my button here just to double check. But now when I disconnect, I'll only get a dribble. If you don't do that, you might have a bit of fuel uh, spraying because obviously it was pressurized to two and a half bar. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any comments as to if my readings are correct or incorrect, please do let me know. Uh, as I say, you come back here on the film. We are connected right in there on the inlet of the fuel rail. Where are my fingers going? Where the, Basically where the pipe connects uh, from the factory, I've put the T, put the bit of rubber there, put the T there and intersected it to get that reading. I do believe that is the correct place, but again, do please comment. Uh, let me know the errors of my way or if I've done things correct. And let me know if the engine seems all healthy and, and of course, and of course, when you, it's also another good thing if you wanna, if your car's parked outside and you wanna prevent it being stolen, just remove fuse number 11 uh, because your typical car thieves of this day and age won't have a clue what they're doing because they can't connect a laptop to it. Uh, so yeah, old school methods uh, generally uh, help prevent, might keep the car on your driveway. Uh, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.